Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art trip, and today we're going to be painting in acrylic step by step this adorable harvest mouse on a dandelion fluff that is starting to blow away. So uh, I'm calling this Make a Wish, and uh, during this painting, you know, just think of all the things that are positive that you're wishing for in your life. Um, I'm going to show you how to paint every part of this, every technique, every color mix, how to sketch them in. If you need more information, it is in the description. We have a traceable on the website, so I do not expect you in any way to draw. If you've never used a traceable, I have two videos for that. Um, there's the art trip of how to use the traceable, and there's also trace it on, which gives you every way to get <laughs> your image onto a canvas, just in case that one way isn't a perfect fit for you. Um, which, you know, in art for individuals. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to help me teach you this awesome mouse by zooming in the camera, getting in the color mixes, making sure you can see the palette, making sure you can see the techniques. Because what you can see, you can duplicate. If you can see me do it, it gives you a much better chance of making this for yourself. Now, this is an 8 by 8 surface. And I'm starting with phthalo green, burnt umber, cad yellow, titanium white, and uh, Mars black. If you don't have burnt umber and all you have is burnt sienna, guess what? Totally fine. Mm. <laughs> it's not a worry at all. If you have no brown, I've got a video on how to make brown. So out of primary color. There's always a way to get there. Never let something be barrier to your beginning. Taking a deep breath, releasing the worries of the week. It's arting time. It's time to it's make time some, to make some, some art. Super cutie cute like I see Aaron Barry and I see Ruth Ann saying hello everyone. They love this one. This is gonna be a really fun positive paint. I say Mary Youngblood and Adrian Clement and who's telling me I look beautiful today. Thank you. You do much. look beautiful today. This is a good, I don't know, the curlers worked better today than you. Some You've, days the curlers work better than other days. you got good 80s hair today. I, I've had good 80s hair since the 80s. Because, you know, you find your hair and then you just go with it. <laughs> Get your jam. I'm taking what is called a bright brush. This brush is a square. It is a synthetic brush. It's about an inch wide. I'm going to get it wet. And I have on my surface a wish and intention for the world. Peace and harmony between family, between community between cities and between countries. Just mm. peace and harmony between all of us. Very good. And we put each other first. So that's my wish for the world. I'm going to blend that away. Blend blending. that away. Blend, blend, blend. Now, is there anything special you need to know about blending words or things you've drawn into the surface down before thing? I use watercolor pencil and or chalk because it removes very easily with a damp brush that's pretty much it if gotcha. i were to use like say a sharpie it would bleed through the canvas mm. oh i see alex three eclipses here today and i see linda's here and joe joe l and oh my gosh the butcher's wife and brandy and sam and this is sam's first live super mm. excited hi sam so we're going to start with an underpainting. This is just a solid color or a, in this case, maybe even a little diffused that gives us a place to start. I want to start with something pretty chill and then do my diffuse technique here. So I'm going to get my brush. And I'm going to get a little of my brown and a little of my green together and just put, and this will be streaky guys, a streaky first layer. And it's okay that it'll be streaky. I'm going to come around my edges a bit for the framer. <laughs> if we were framing, we should probably start framing the art. Oh my gosh, I couldn't afford to do the show if I had to frame the art. I hate too much. <laughs> All right, so this just gives me a color to start with. And what this can do is, especially if I've got maybe paints that are not as covering as other brands of paint, this gives me a nice start of color to build any other color that I have up and there'll be a nice kind of wealth of depth in there. I see Joy Sawyer and Tammy Edwardson and Vanit who is coming from Mumbai, India, which is far, far away. Far, far away. From where I am. You probably are not uh, cold and snowy right now where you are. Maybe you are though. I don't think so. I'm going to... Um, 
dry that surface? Yeah, I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay. And then we're going to blend in. I see Mary from Ireland and Kate from Wales. And uh, and Cindy. Hi, Simon. This is my first live show. What region in Pennsylvania are you in? The one with the bears. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thank you. And while you're hanging out here, don't for, don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button down below. Um, it helps us uh, get the notifications out there when we're going live. And speaking of those notifications, oh, don't forget to get the bell. Um, and we've got a little thing. Where's my thing? I got a button. Where's the button? It's, there it is. For text notifications, you can notify, get, send 33222. To the art sherpa and that's send oh i'm sorry you send the art sherpa to three three two 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 and then we'll be able to get you um no notified that we're going to be going live well while john is getting the reference up for me i have to read dusty reinhardt's comment oh the debate amongst myself right now to join the teleconference or watch acrylic painting with the sherpa decisions decisions adulting is hard I also struggle with this. I need my reference. Thank you. Uh, Chelsea says, hi, lovelies. And I've got Michelle. Hi, from Gallatin, Pennsylvania. I got Dusty from Arizona. And Dusty has sent some stars. Thank you for the stars. I see Irene is dropping some donuts in the chat. And uh, Valerie says she's up in Minnesota, but it's unseasonably warm this week. I don't think that's a real thing. Is that a real thing where it's, uns I just like it to be warm. I consider that super seasonable. Which, yeah. I guess, oh, it's up on the thing so I can kind of work it out. Now, I do have a diffuse background. I do have some stuff going on. But I, I really want to put that attention where it's going to be. So let's just for a second sketch in the placement of what our dandelion is. I'm taking, this is a chalk tool. If you've never seen this cool tool, this is a tailor's chalk tool. You can use kids chalk from a chalkboard. Oh, that's perfect. But whatever chalk you use, it needs to not have any wax or oils and it needs to be clay-based and not staining. So this one is clay-based and not staining. It's by Dritz. 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 I sometimes see it at Joanne's. This is kind of if the whole puff ball were round, but we know it's going to kind of arc back here. It's got a bit of a perspective going on, right? Mm. And then there's some of its little stem coming. There we go. And our mouse fellow, right? He is sitting up here. He's taking up a lot of our fluff. So let's just loosely, not really, we're not totally drawing him in yet. We're just saying, dude, you know, where are you at on the surface? When I see him, my brain just screens. Do 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 He is that. Harvest mites, I think, are some of the most wonderful uh, subjects to paint, and that's because they get themselves in predicaments. There's a lot of references of them dangling from berries <laughs> and doing unexpected things, and so they are wonderful. For the initial sketch of this, right? I'm gonna just talk about the size that he would take up. Right. So when I paint my background, I'm not worried about painting the whole thing. I'm just painting some of the thing, what I need of the thing. I can get my bright back again. And we're going to come in and do a little of our green and brown. We'll add some yellow to it this time. Shall we? Mm -hmm. If we must, we must. There we go. Let's come down here. And you can kind of brush this into where you know the dandelion fluff will be. Little burnt umber, little cad yellow, little phthalo green. Mm. Right mm. there. So by adding the burnt umber, I'm preventing my phthalo green from going radioactively neon. Ooh, don't right? go neon. It wasn't when you want it to go neon, it's fantastic. But when you're not really sure if you want it to go neon, it's not a real sure thing. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of being very random with my brush and what i'm trying to do is keep this background diffused and out of focus and something that you know looks like oh there's something in the background but it's far far away and we don't really know what that is 
going to keep getting maybe the brown and green together. I do want to focus most of this more green. And the reason I do, and the reason you might want to, is because the red of the mouse and the green of the background are complements, essentially. And it will help the mouse pop forward and look very bright and uh, saturated. So again, you can see I'm doing this darker green up here, coming down. You can also brush into where you expect your mouse to be a little bit. We'll re-sketch them in. We just didn't want to have to paint everything if we didn't have to paint everything. You can see it's the dark green back here and the lighter values coming around. I can get back into my yellow as I come around. You can see how I have diffused that in. And I didn't even need any fancy brushes. <laughs> Just a bright. I'm all the time telling you guys, and I truly mean it. I will tell you, and I will today, I will share with you my very favorite brush for fur. I think it's a game changer. The fur brush. The fur brush. You can still do these techniques with any brush you have. And it's very important to keep focus, whether you're painting with me, whether you're painting with anybody, is to remember you can do it. There's always three, four ways to do something. Generally in art, there is more than one way to get in there. Uh, Seal Driscoll says, hi, I'm getting ready to work. I hope I can find this to do this later. So if you're looking for this on replay, what we're doing is we have um, a playlist of these on YouTube. They will be on the website and they will be on the Facebook page video tab. That's three locations and they may end up on Roku. Mm. So possibly four locations for you to find for replay to paint this year, next year, into the future. Because when is a harvest mouse on a dandelion not going to be fun to paint? I will say that the easiest place to find it, our videos now mm -hmm. is getting them to be on Roku. It's, it's, I mean, like we're, we're moving more and more towards a place where it's going to be easier. I am getting messages from people saying, I'm digging the Roku, so it's, go it's figure. It's, it's coming along. Ah, so let's see. I see Tina Posey says, Se brisma, bravissima, boy, he adoro. I'm going to guess that she's saying she likes the painting. I'm going to guess. I think that's, I think that's what it is, though. Can you do a unicorn Christmas thing? And Anissa, uh, Santiago, yes, but I've already, I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, there is a unicorn. There's a secret cookie unicorn from that gray horse in the snow. Hmm. Yeah, then it, it happened on Facebook, but it's all on the website. Ugh. Oh, yes. All right. I want to dry this so I can sketch better. Okay. Yeah. Sketchy, sketchy. Sketchy, sketchy. So what she's doing is drying the surface to make sure that, uh, it doesn't smear or it's not too soft when she goes to sketch in with that pencil. And uh, you really want a nice and dry, um, you know, solid surface when you start to, to put the, um, the you know, draw with any chalk or anything. Otherwise, it can get gummed up. Now, this is another type of chalk tool. This is a pastel chalk tool by General's Pencil. And I can sharpen it, and it does nice detail work. On the occasion, I want to sketch on my canvas in a detailed way. So if I look at his face, there's a zone of his face, a circle at the front. And on this circle lives his nose and that cute, cute smile that's like Baby Yoda. It made us so happy. Right. And he's got his round circle on his skull. Because his face is a little bit at a three-quarter angle, you want to bisect through the middle a little bit towards the left. And I'm going to bring down his, and I'm going to exaggerate it, his little happy mouth, as you do. His ears are a little bit kind of in in repose, we can kind of see that. Maybe not as much this ear on this side, but we do see some of his fluff. And we can exaggerate things, and it's important to remember to exaggerate things. If I put an eye here, I get a boop, 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 boop. And I'm just talking to you about this so you understand how when you're looking at a skull and you're trying to figure out where do I put things, right? If you look at my face, you can divide it down the middle. If you divide it you know, kind of in half, my eyes end up here. If you divide that in half again, my nose ends up here. And if you divide it between the chin, it ends up here. 
if I turn, those lines don't change. They just go into perspective. And my eyes will be on that same line, right? Even as I turn. So this is happening for him. I don't know if that's helpful, but sometimes different explanations can make it seem easier to process. He's, he's a bit looking up and he's going to have some of this eye covered in fur. Now I'm going to come right here. I know I'm going to have this sort of belly thing that he's got going on. And yes, he does have a wonderful little kind of, if you look at him, there's a little area that is this part of his chest, another little area right here that is his part of his chest. And whenever you're thinking about drawing stuff, um, especially for drawing for painting, because drawing for drawing, like when you're rendering what you see, it's a very different set of goals than drawing for painting. Because in painting, you're going to end up always needing to uh, kind of paint over a lot of the stuff that you draw in. So there's no point in doing like an extreme render. I've got a little foot here, right? And then he's got another little foot here onto the fluff. That's how light he is, right? His little, his little foot. Now, he doesn't have a tail showing. And this is an op opportunity for you guys to make some decisions in your painting. If you want a tail to show, like you could have a little tail go up like that. And that would actually be kind of engaging on his body. It isn't there, but it's quite lovely. His tail, the mouse model's tail, somebody had nipped it off. Uh, it looks like probably a cage mate, and so it was really short and stubbed. Hmm. But he was fat and furry and had been in several things, so it feels like he was cared for. <laughs> I was a little concerned at first, but then I was like, ah, it feels like he might be cared for, so we can be okay. Making sure we've got good positioning on this. Now we're going to see part of the dandelion in detail right here. And these will be going out, as we know. This information is just so that when I'm drawing, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to really think about detailing this stuff out. And then I know my fluff will be running around here. It's pretty big, pretty big around. Any line fluff, a little stem off. And another thing is we may float. I'm going to put one over here, too, just to balance everything. A little bit of dandelion fluffs will come off there. Mm. So that's weirdly the basic sketching that we need. Not, it's not that bad. Fluffity gonna, fluff. Gonna get a number four round or cat's tongue. Number four round. There we go. And I may put out um, a little yellow ochre. All right. I see that. Um, wow, we have so many people coming in to watch. Anna says, love from Krita. And Tammy says, you still need a device unless it's a Roku TV. So she's giving Roku advice. Oh. And Hickey Seller says that they're excited to try this. And I'm excited to have you try this with me. Mm -hmm. I'm excited you guys are joining us. I'm very excited. I'm going to take my yellow ochre and my, my CAD yellow medium, and I'm going to mix them together and get a little green on it. And then I'm going to find out why John exclaimed, oh, because I'm sure there's a very good reason for that. I'm just happy to see everybody. You're happy to see everybody? Yeah. I'll say that I disagree with that at all. We're going to paint this in with kind of that yellow green. Right here. And I'm going to come in with a little of my green brown. That mixed in there. And put some white into this. some dots in later to, to represent the seed pods, but it's just going to be nice to get some of these really interesting colors in there. You can see I'm just sort of swishing. The brush stroke is a little curved, and it's very soft pressure. I'm not bending the filaments. I'm not working that super hard. You want it to be a little darker back here. You can come into the brown, burnt umber. You can also come into a blue. I'll just do that because that's nice. So, oh, no. You just sacrificed your coffee. 
That was Coffee Sacrifice. The coffee. Don't drink cadmium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if you're in the middle of the show and now you really want to because you messed up your cadmium. I'm going to pull out a fan brush. A nice little fan brush. And I'm going to get a little... Uh, I could do Thalo or Ultramarine into this. And I'm going to pick Ultramarine um, because it tends to be a little more muted than Thalo. Thalo's uh, bright turquoise value kind of pulls it forward in a canvas. Mm -hmm. And the red of this where it goes into the purple kind of keeps it in the distance. I am using a number four Cambridge Hog fan brush. You can use any fan brush. I'm going to get just a smidge. 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 A smidge. I'm going to come back here and paint some little out of focus fluffies. We'll have detailed fluffs that we kind of pull to the front, but right now we need to have some shadowed fluffs. Super fluff. Super fluffs, if you want this to be super fluff. The super fluff on this is going to definitely come around here. And see what I'm really trying to do is just get a diffused background going. It's a little lighter over here. I won't be as heavy handed with it. See, That's a lot more dry brushy. And this is about just giving ourselves a little architecture for dandelion sort of hang on. And by making it just a little blue, we'll be able to come in with brighter whites and really pop some values and some things. Even come around here. And this will be interesting. I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre in there. And a little more of my ultramarine. And just diffuse this a bit as well. But you can see it's very dry and soft. Not a detail bit. And no, it is not with the direction. Like, this isn't our finished place. Um, <laughs> There's a Charles Nyugin who has found the word chicken and just is leaning into it. We just uh, there leaning was a troll. into the chicken. Well, a, I mean a chicken troll. Chicken. I mean that's a thing, pretty man. look. That's a mild look. We can take a mild chicken troll. <laughs> we can withstand a chicken. <sighs> you remember uh, good old style trolling? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, good times. Good I don't really know what to do with chicken. Like, <laughs> just, it's even hard to like find a space to be like thoroughly upset about it. All right, I'm going to continue to add a little yellow to this, and we're just getting a little bit of a deep value. We'll come back and pick up on that in a little bit. I may, I'll let that dry, and I will re soften it with something here. Now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to be actually using my number four round. Um, Judy says, can't get traceable no more, so I miss painting with y'all. Is, uh, is there changing a printout? Uh, looks beautiful. So, Judy, um, write support at theartsherpa.com. Yeah. We're a lot of and we things, will try to help you figure yeah. out how to solve the traceable, because oftentimes it's a, it's a simple thing that we can help with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not. Sometimes this. We've got a bunch of updates to our website, so most of that should be working pretty well now. But we'll check on some stuff and make sure that whatever's not working, we get working. We're going to come here and just kind of piece out a few thoughtful, thought out little shapes that you'll recognize. These are the seed pod. They kind of are a radial fan that comes out. You know, these are far away. These are in the distance are not our brightest, but they are identifiable. Here's one that's kind of coming free of the dandelion fluff. And I'm just using my, my number four. Hmm. I'm doing this here because there has to be some behind the mouse. He's in a, he's in an interesting position. 
There's a bit of the fluff that has to go behind him. And then he goes on and then a bunch that comes in front. We're just figuring out our layering. Let's, if you're having trouble getting the brush to flow paint, you just want to add a little drop of water. Again, these aren't the most focused. They're just these details that need to be behind. You can be very light and be kind of like, oh, there's something here, but it's just very chill. You just find those few little pieces that you talk about in a more mind way i keep looking to like mess up my coffee ah dusty says meeting is canceled acrylic painting live with the sherpa is life helped her out there i'm gonna put out some burnt sienna some cad red as well joni would like to know is there an update on the christmas kit yes we are waiting for brushes but that's that's, what that's we're the for. update well and maybe glitter paint yeah, but we get it. They're like, yes, we will send you that. So we're just, we're now just down to. No, I had to jump through some weird hoops for the glitter paint, so I'm not sure where we're at with that. Yeah, we're just some. But there's some hoopage. There's hoopage. I'm, I'm tell you all the colors I'm putting what, out in just a brand, second here. What brand of paint are you using? So here? today I've got some Artist Loft oh. Level Three, oh. not Level One, Level oh. Three. Love it. I have some uh, Senneliers, acrylique, and you may. Don't, I think this is, oh, nope, this is the collection today. today. These are the two types. But what they are is professional level acrylics. Uh, you don't have to be professional, use professional level acrylics. It's just, uh, they do a good job of um, coverage and they have good pigmentation and it's something that you will really, really like. Rhonda says, can we do a gingerbread house? Yeah, sure, why not? I see no reason why not. I'm going to come here to where I sketched in the eye. And I'm going to just loosely put that in in black real quick. So as I'm painting the fur, I know where that is. And come here. And also add that part of his little eye. That's my thing. <laughs> so I'm under his nose, down between. And I will come in with maybe a different color, but right now I just want to make sure that this part of his, you see him kind of like very lightly. That's going to let me come back in and define things. And I just don't want to lose that wonderful expression. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah. That's what I'm going to push and exaggerate. No. Here. And weirdly, and you'll see why in a minute, and it will really help me, I'm going to put in his little mousy claws, his little mousy hand with this black. I can very quickly come back with other colors, but having it like this will let me um, get those values and shades easier later. You can see I'm creating just hints. Hints. Fourth little. And come back and do the other one the same yeah. way. And it, don't feel too stressed about these because a lot of fluff is going to be coming on to where their little hands are. Little paws. So you just want to have that basis. Just bringing on the fluff. Just bringing on the fluff. So it's going to be something you're not really going to struggle with. Now, I'm going to take a little of my green and my black together, mostly green. Come in, and while I'm here, add some of those little dark values. 
Aren't they fun? Yeah. They're the wish makers. We all have little wish makers in our lives. Yeah. Those optimistic souls. <laughs> Rhonda says her kids are have uh, they're not she's not allowed in a uh, gingerbread contest because she's too good, she's too good of a that's gingerbread. A, she's a gingerbread a, ringer. That's a good thing. Oh, Jennifer Oven says, can you explain the difference between the Sennelier acrylic and the Sennelier uh, abstract? Sennelier abstract is made by the same company. Um, it is a more economy paint. It's I don't really recommend a lot of student paints, but I do recommend that one because they didn't just completely tank quality mm -hmm. to cut the costs. And they kept the pigments good and they kept the binders good and it doesn't do shrinkage. But there's a huge difference between the cost between these. These are more saturated, brighter, more intense. Um, you'll see a variety of prices across the line because they're the real pigments, whereas these are hues and uh, level one pigments as well. Mm-hmm. That is a difference. I mean, certainly these will cover better. Betty was wondering why her brushes dry um, very stiff after she's washed them. And she has to sort of bend them and break the break down the bristles again every time she washes them. You're not getting something out of your brush. Generally, it could be the soap you're using. You could, could be, It could be that you're just not getting soap out. Yeah. could be how how soft or hard your water is could really make a big difference on how much stuff comes out of your brushes. So I'm making a light green here while John is going over that. I think it's a good idea to go over. And I'm going to just light some of these. See how we're doing? I'm not going to paint the whole little crazy uh, geometric pattern, but just nice to have. Um, value I come into my yellow ochre while I'm here maybe get some burnt sienna mm -hmm. and add just a little <laughs> bit of a highlight to the stem uh, something super out of focus <laughs> I don't know what's super out of focus. Hmm. Check your resolution. Che oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Check resolution. I don't know that Facebook. Facebook. Uh, I don't know that Facebook lets you up your revol uh, uh, resolution. I know YouTube does. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty good going out from here. Okay. But, uh, I'm gonna also come here and I'm gonna take a little of my brown and burnt sienna together and I'm gonna get a little of my black. You want to get some underneath here and I'm gonna turn this a bit. And just a few of these starting, starting seed pods. You know, it's, it's funny, whenever someone hears that we moved away from Texas to Pennsylvania. Now this is funny, because it's a money layered thing. Because if, if they're from Texas, they're like, why would you leave Texas? <laughs> we left Tex this is Texas, why would you leave? And then when they hear, you know, Pennsylvania has snow, that's the next thing they say, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like real snow. It does like for real, the snow. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab a small brush. This is a hog bristle brush, and it's just to give me like control over the space around his face, so I'm not struggling. I'm gonna come in and we're gonna begin the basis of his fur. And let's come with a mix of the burnt sienna and a little black. I'm going to begin to paint, locking in some of the values. There's a little bit of white cream mm -hmm. around his nose and eye. And we've got some pink in there, so we definitely want to keep that. This is a very dark value. We're going to be lightening up around it as we go. Again, burnt sienna and a little bit of black, keeping the cream center. And the reason we do a dark value is if we want to do these like deep little cracks of fur, it's pretty nice and helpful to do that. And then also we'll come here. Even though there's a lot of him hidden in the fluff. There's a lot. 
There's a lot of him hidden in the fluff. We still have to paint in parts of that so it hides correctly. So around here, again, this is a number two Cambridge. Use just your small bright or a small brush that lets you be scrapey and scruffy. You're looking for a scrapey and scruffy technique. It's a dry brush. I don't have a lot of water on it in any way. Here and adding a little bit of the fur on that, that little chest puff that we initially kind of drew out. I'm here and also add some of that. Now coming in, let's get a little more black onto the brush. I haven't rinsed out the, the white in any way. And this here. Kind of a deep gray. Quite dark at first. We'll be building up. And go pay attention to how the fur directionality is going so that when you're painting, your brush stroke kind of mimics that. Get a little directionality of fur. Bring in a little more white. A little brown coming around his little face, a little short stroke pulling out to inform that little fur feeling. The start. Looking good. It's looking weird, sir. But I like it. I don't care. I don't know. He looks like he's a little guy having fun there. Now I'm going to take my brown and interestingly enough, a bit of my quinacridone magenta, right? So my quinacridone magenta, my cad red medium, my burnt sienna. Yellow green, burnt um, umber, cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, titanium white, ultramarine blue, and Mars black. I'm here on my tail. Pull this out. Now it's true that their tails and stuff will have a bit of that. I'm going to come inside the ear some. That color. I'm definitely going to come under the nose with a little bit of this. This is a magenta and burnt sienna. I'm come above the nose a bit with this. Magenta and burnt sienna. We're going to also come down into the feet and start the feet. Can add a little white into it so it's just goes a little more kind of mauvey, just so you can see a little bit better. The tops. A little bit there. We know that we're gonna lose a lot of this in in the fur. We just need this here right now. A little bit of this to make sure that's nice directionality. Now, I'm going to take a little of my cad red and some of my cad yellow and mix them together and make a nice bright orange. And then I'll get my burn sienna into it. Come right here above this little part of the nose, adding this pretty bright little bump of brown. I'm above the pink hair, a little bit around the side. Short little strokes around the eye, kind of implying that the fur is there. A stroke, come back with a little bit of that. And you can see those two colors sort of play off of each other. Mm -hmm. Under the eye. can always get more brown into the mix. More brown into it. 
This definitely has a bit of a red, red cast. Mm. Brushing that back. Okay, if your mouse gets fluffy, fluffy mouse is a happy mouse. I don't know if that's actually true in mouse care. <laughs> in this painting, a fluffy mouse is a happy mouse. So again, it's the burnt sienna into that orange. We might even pull a little onto the tail. Just a little bit. Pink kind of peeks through. Add a little white. Make a little bit of a detailing on the tail. So we come back here, picking out, picking out off the toe. I'm not pushing deep. Gives a nice little house there. I'm going to come here and I blend in. You can even get your yellow ochre into it, your little orange color over to your yellow ochre. You're just lightening this just a bit. And if you'll notice, there's little pops where the fur kind of shelves out. Mm -hmm. So you can come in and play with that as well right now. Again, we're just doing the number four round. We haven't even gotten into any specialty brushes. We're just building up these fur layers. Fur is actually so fun to paint. Starting to get him in now. Got this wonderful set of color, and I can come right into my white. Now. Create some little guard furs. Oh, must have filled this low. Mm. Sometimes I fill my water cup too low, and so when I dip in, I have to dip too deep. Your brush is pretty firm, isn't it? My brush is a firm brush for acrylic paint. If I had a very soft brush, I would be really struggling. Come here along his little lip. Little lip. Come here too, across his little lip, pulling back, short little strokes. Come up above the nose a bit. Now we're just flattening that out, hmm. creating that little flat space above the nose. You can always get back into your pink. There's a lot of that going on here. And I'm not rinsing out just a ton. Not rinsing out just a ton. Back into my magenta. I'm trying to capture this wonderful little kind of pinkish space that he has. And he has a little bit of it here. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to get right into my magenta. I just keep looking to see if I'm in my coffee. <laughs> uh, back in and tighten up my eyes a little bit. Round that out a little bit. into my very kind of light pinky color. 
add some of that hair on his little little feet. Very dry brush. Mostly at the top of the paw. A little bit of black. I've rinsed out thoroughly. And I'm just have to go back in there and fix a little finger. Even though they're going to be hidden under fluff, you still kind of want them to look like they're a little bit crowded together. Yeah. There we go. He's looking really good. Now, let me show you one of my very favorite fur brushes on planet Earth. This is this one happens to be a 3 8 Filbert Grass Foam. It is in the Ruby Satin line by Silver Brush Limited. It is awesome sauce. Every way that it could be awesome sauce. So fantastic. I also have a quarter inch grass comb. And these are clipped into uh, little areas. So yeah, you could get in with a tiny little fan, right? You absolutely could, but if I wanna come here and get maybe see a little more of my yellow red going, as you do, and come into my white. What's this gonna come? I love it. Yeah. That. Oh, that. It is my favorite brush. Prefer. Get into my burnt sienna. And if you want to come in and do like little shelves out. You can do that much easier even in his little foot and belly. So then I can come back with some black, right? Mm -hmm. Look, you can even make those little crazy guard hairs. These are little black guard hairs that are interwoven in his fur, aren't they? They are. You want to capture them where you can. I know I'm just playing with them. I really like them, though, is what it is. I'm going to get a little white into that. A little white and gray. Here there's some like lovely little bits of fur. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. Just one of my very favorite tools. Now these furs kind of come in towards the center chest. And there's some that drag down through the middle. Into my white again. Into my way up here along his little top lip. The furs coming together quite nicely. His little furs are coming together. Almost there. He's 
getting there. He'll come in pretty fast once he starts to really come in. He'll be just like, boom. He'll be like, no mouse, mouse. Mm. No mouse, mouse. He's looking Joy pretty Sawyer is, uh, Joy Sawyer is, uh, can you use a detail brush? You absolutely can. You absolutely can get in here and use a detail brush. And you will not be harmed for the experience. I'm going to get a little of my white out and some of my blue, but I'm going to make a fairly light color. Okay. A little black to it. And come here and detail out some of these little hair directions. This is a number four round detail brush. It's great for making little lines. Let's come here and kind of see some of this. Maybe right there and then. Just a light gray. A little bit right here on his little lip, a little highlight touch, a little pop of white right there, but it's not a, it's not a pure white, right? It's got that gray in it, so it's not the whitest white. A little bit here. Let me get into my magenta. And I'll come into my brown. Make sure that the shape of the nose is mousy. Yeah. Get into my black. I've wiped off on my towel. Wiped off on my towel. Mm -hmm. And just make sure that this little bit of detailing is in there. I'm going to come in with my black. Do some interesting things here. to add these dark spots in the fur east and it's sort of shelving out definitely a focus here at the belly and he's got a couple over here How are we doing? Really good. I think this looks really cool. He's gorgeous. He's yeah. getting cuter by the minute. You know, we got to get him all the way to the cuteness. My, my lightest color. And you just keep going a little lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Yeah. Kind of building up and capturing little moments that are. They're super visible. All right. I may even pull a little bit of this light color through the tail a bit, maybe towards the end here. Creating that space. Oh, 
Oh, Alana, uh, Elena Robert says, just amazing. And Shanta Bloodsworth Rice says, I'm sad because I missed the beginning. Hey, everyone. So, hey, how are you? Oh, Love thank me. you, Sharon, for the stars. I really appreciate that. That is very kind. Let's finish out our furs. Mm -hmm. So, you can use my favorite fur brush, but I'll show you with the with this. There's certainly a lot of these darker my guard hairs up here. Always come back with some brown. I feel like those are too strong. I just clean my brush and I just come back. You hide in? Mm -hmm. uh, if it gets away from me, I just go back and go, oh, no, no. Please, no, 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 no. And it can be like, oh, okay. You know, you were just like, there. And I'm like, yeah, I was totally there. I'm going to come in and get a little of my cad red and my burnt sienna and a little cad yellow, make kind of a light color here. Very orangey light. Hey, did you see the comment about Young Brush Alex? I did not. I took, got all furred up and I'm getting a little highlight. I totally did not. Took first place in an art in a school painting competition with Art Sherpa tutorial. Congratulations. Isn't that a nice feeling? Nice yeah. feeling. Creating some little light hairs through here. Because spilled mouse. It's gotta be natural. It's gotta be able to hide, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe some little goldy hairs out here that are catching the light. Little hair over here catching the light. More cad red into it. Perhaps for this side of his little cheek. And to add to his little mousiness. Yeah. Up his mouse game. Up his mouse game. That's what he needs. Up his mouse game. Get a little bit of my uh -huh. pink and white again. And just make sure. That this part of his smile stays smiley. You don't want to lose the smile no matter what you do. A bit of a pink lip there. Now, here's my deal on the eye reflections. My two cents on this um, will be that we take a little of our blue and some of our white. Believe it or not, we're gonna come here and start with that blue, making a little spot there. Just perhaps a hint here at the top, right? Not, not pure white. Then I'm going to get a little white, just white on the tip of my brush, as you see here. Add a bit of white to that, not pure white reflection. We need to get more blue back in. Mm-hmm. Soften it, you can, but you don't want your reflection to be your white. You want it to be there, and it should show, and there should definitely be a spot of white in it, but you want it to be mostly not. And then when you have that all in, you can come back in. Make sure you've got a nice shadow. And his beautiful little eye. Isn't he cute? Yeah. He's so cute. 
now we get to do fun, 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 fun things. So come here and we've got kind of our orange already going, but we're gonna get our red more into our burnt sienna. Sort of enjoy that. Let's pick up some highlights, just a few of the seed highlights that would be there. Some of these are in focus. You can always come get a little yellow ochre and white into the mix, adding another layer of highlight. It's starting to be a thing. Now I'm going to come back with that. Remember I said I was going to save my brush, my scruffy, scruffy brush mm -hmm. to do a thing. I'm going to come back and do a thing. I'm going to come back and make sure that I take some of my not pure white, my off white. This is again that number four Cambridge. And I'm going to just not paint out, but make less obvious perhaps some of the stem. So you still see the stem and it's there and it's buried and it's absolutely happening, but it isn't like the whole thing. And if you have trouble with lines and stuff, um, one thing you may want to consider is an angle brush. Is when I come in with my white and yellow ochre, if I am Going some of these in the deep fluff lines, right? These aren't the this little structure of lines that are happening. Again, this is a three eighths angle brush, ruby satin. You can find angle brushes in most brush packs. They give you nice crisp line edges. You start with the short, when you do a stroke, you begin with the short end and finish with the long end. If you go the opposite way, it makes terrible lines. And I just say that because you might not know. Mm. And it would be reasonable if you didn't know. Not everybody know everything, right? And I'm going to create that nice deep dark shadow that is here because there's a lot of this in a deep dark shadow. Into the white. Hiding that. So we're creating that depth of dandelion fluff. Mm -hmm. We're really painting the dandelion. Really are. We're not skipping parts of it. We're not going through doing nothing. We are really just doing it. I'm adding higher and higher highlights, but not my lightest highlight that I'll have. Just some value and some structure. I'm going to get this brush here, get water, and I'm going to start to add some light fluff. I'm getting into my white. And these will be, you know, maybe I'll have a little brown in them. I'll have a little, let me just make sure that this part of the fluff. Super fluff. Super fluff has these. These really defined little bits of hairs. We can even start to imply these little fans. See how we're starting to imply the fans? Mm -hmm. they're not our focused fans, but they're there, and we know that they're there. It's just a little bit of work. You can do it. 
guys are doing great. Keep making little fans. Russian little fans. You can do it. Russian little fans. Angle brushes are one of my favorites for holding a sharp edge, says Colleen Marie. That is absolutely true. Uh, and then Gomez, Amanda says, so if I need to make a thin straight line, what would be the best brush to use? If the line needs to be straight, an angle brush or a script liner would be brushes that would work really, really well. Just continuing to add a little fluff. Fluff it up. It's the fluff it up buttercup portion yeah. of the show. <laughs> fluff it up buttercup. How is everybody doing today? Really I good. This is an enjoyable one. I mean, like, I've certainly enjoyed it. Hamu says, but there's a smiley face under your name in chat. Um, Carrie Miller, what do you think about water? Henry Miller, what do you think about watercolors? I love them. I teach them. <laughs> There'll be a watercolor lesson on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think watercolors are an amazing medium. I think that um, they travel really well if you're limited on space. Mm -hmm. um, they're fantastic. They have a really warm community attached to them. Watercolor artists as a community are really inclusive and share techniques and have so many events and activities and organizations that you can participate in. Um, very tremendous art form. Tends to be, uh, you know, uh, on the back end of the expense, a little more expensive in framing. You know, to get, to get the kind of stuff you want out of the framing, it's a little pricier. But that's not really a deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. In any way. Da, 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 da. Dusty uh, says, I have watched several tutorials on dandelions by artists who do realism and photorealism, and this is honestly the best I've seen and the most well taught. Dusty, man, thank you. I was sitting here like, am I doing a good job? Am I explaining the techniques? <laughs> so thank you. I really think you are, but you never listen to me. I, well, you know, you like me, you married me. <laughs> I do. You can't things. be trusted. <laughs> so we're just going to keep loading up. This isn't our whitest color, and we're just implying the fan. We're not having to do the most, like, uh, fan yet. We will get to that in a minute. Because if we wait for a second and we put that effort into the select pieces that we really need to see those details, then everything will come together so much better. Now, here's the trick. We're going to, if I have it still at my table, and it is, I'm going to show you a trick. I really like titanium white by Golden in the Fluid too. I love it so much. And it lets me make super, 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 super fine lines when I need to make fine lines. I have a monogram liner out. I'm always washing brushes, so sometimes the detail brush that I have is in a varying stage of washing. I have some other details. I have some art Sherpa details that are in pretty good shape. So I've got these two details. And what you want is a small detail brush that will really let you get control over what you have going on. So if you'll notice on the fluffs that we can really see, and it's okay if you get a little blue into it, let's come here and do one. So we're going to come around and Make a full circle. Mm. Just fluffing that out now. Because they're really not like a half circle. They're like, they make a round bowl. Yeah. So when the dandelion is turning the fluff towards us, instead of seeing the bowl in perspective, we would see it in full force. Yes. The reason fluid paint is of use to you as an artist over just thinning the paint you have with water is because it is a super saturated pigment load. Hmm. So if you really need it to pop, that's how you get there.
And you can see we are, these are just, we don't see the stems on these. We see the flight part of the seed. The part that is designed to get air. And we see the full circle of them. You can see it gives this that nice focus out of focus effect. If the seed is facing me full, all of the little rounds mm -hmm. will be the same length. If it's facing me in three quarters, the ones on this left hand side will be a little shorter. Gotcha. Those little brush strokes around. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit like our octopus from the uh, tentacle painting with the suckers, there is a bit of repeat work. But the nice thing about repeat work is it lets you just sort of listen to a book on tape or kind of some music and really relax and lean into it. You have some favorites. We do. A books or... Books what? you like to listen to. Yes, I do. I have some favorites. I have some hardcore favorites. Tell me books. So <laughs> John has to deal with my favorites. I don't know if I deal with it. Just listen. I'm taking also. some black to some bird sienna. You, well, you kind of listen to it the same one over again. And we're going to make little dots, small dots in the center of these. You see that there? Just a hint of one. Show the seeds going. Just the start of it. And then back into our white. And the reason I do that is so I don't get so far into the fluff that I don't remember to uh, add the seeds. The little stemmy part. Just using my... My turning thing to be able to continue to turn this around. I can't wait till we do the flying fluffs. Those are going to be fun. Again, this is a number one archer for detail round, but you could use any round that gives you good point. This is fluid paint. Now, if you can't get the golden fluid paint, and by the way, that doesn't mean your whole painting is going to be ruined, so don't panic. If you can't, another option would be to get deco. Um, Craft paint, they uh, have several. They also, the Americana line is actually an artist line. It's the only craft paint that I recommend. And you can get their white, and they have a titanium white in their line. And so you can get this consistency and the extra coverage in that, in that instance. Just adding these little ones that you can see. Coming around, trying not to get too heavy on one side and forgetting the work of another side, you know? Now these fluffs will go up into here. They'll come like kind of in a foreshortened thing and really come heavily here. So a lot of what you see here will be completely fluffed, just so you know. Uh, Cindy says, it's amazing what putting that small dot in the middle does for it. Oh, yeah, the small dot is like everything. Little details, man. Weird little details tell us what a thing is. We have such an interesting visual memory, don't we, as a species? Maybe yeah. remember things. Kind of do. And John is right. John is only teasing me about a book because he has to listen to the same series of books over and over again because right now I'm just currently obsessed. So I just re-listen and then reread because I'm waiting for the one that just came out on Kindle to be an audio book because Chris Ducart reads it and she's really, really good. 
I pretty much listen to anything she reads. And then also, this is Annette Marie, so I'll read anything she writes. So it's a just one and done kind of a thing. Yeah. And for those of you that know that I was reading the land cow seeds, I'm up on eight, so just waiting. <laughs> And I won't say anything because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. These are more defined lines, right? But not, you know, completely everything. And we can let some of this fluff. We're going to show some of these lines. Not every one of them, just the ones that are kind of forward facing enough to have a dot or a bit of a hint of a dot just a just a hinting of it so that you're like oh yeah yeah i know what that is yeah yeah well i got it all right good times good times we're going to take uh, a little bit of our black and white and make a very dark gray and that's so that we can pop a shadow highlight against something Let's talk about like maybe there's one that goes here. A little lighter than that. Okay, and then it's gonna have a thick part of the seed. In there and we're gonna just start making these little seeds. They're gonna need a highlight though. So we are really gonna have to do that. That's not optional. Right. And this is exploding all over him. He's got fluff all over him. He's making his wish. He's putting it out there. Wishing that them Nim rats don't notice him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so funny. Coming forward. I'm sure the fluff looks like it's just sort of everywhere around him. Making sure we got the fluffs. These fluffs are gray. They're not the whitest white, but they are showing some of that going up. Now, rinse out. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre and titanium white together come here and highlight that part of the seed stem highlight part of the stem and some of the fluff seed stem all right looking pretty good so then i've got this yellow ochre and white. And even get into my burn sienna a bit. White worm. We're going to start to pop some seeds off here. I'm gonna just make sure I've got nice stems that are really showing. And the nice highlighties. Mm -hmm. They really show. Making sure these are here. I can pull a few of these lines forward as I know that they're going to kind of show more.
He's coming forward here. Mm. Shorten up those little strokes. A little white paint coming around. Really cute. It's getting there. Some more of the white hair. Around, almost there. making the bowl. It's just about the layers, and as you get those little layers going, it'll get there. Yep. These aren't pure white. They have a little bit of that brown in them. They're lighter than everything that's near them, sure, but they're not the lightest value that we're going to have. Those will be pieces that sit on top. Maybe even a little more in our focus than other things. Get a little of my black brown dotting. Mm hmm. Super cute. It will get there. It will be super cute, sir. Getting there. Just getting there. And we're going to keep pulling it forward. We just keep moving through everything. There's a perspective here. Yep. Which we need to honor where the pods, this part of the stem has blown. Maybe not every part of the stem has blown. I can get a little bit of my other colors and pull some more stems. Kind of implied even. Maybe some little thicknesses of the stems. Coming in implied. No. Going into my white. And you can see we're just pulling those fans out, those little umbrella tops by yeah. the seeds. Now, how on a scale of one to three, how difficult is this? Well, I originally thought it would be a two hoop, but we've gotten so committed to the details um, that I'll up, I'll up it to like maybe a three. Mm. Just to say we were so, we've invested in these details to the point where no, I, I would say that we could call it more. I would say it's all, it's a level two, a higher level two, potentially a level three. Mm. And that what that'll be about when you're trying to understand a rating system is that you as a student, there's a lot of variety in what will feel like difficult and not difficult to you. And there's so many factors. Like one of them is do you have all the skills in the lesson because if you have all the skills in the lesson a three can feel like a two right yeah. if you have a lot of stamina in your painting right if you if you can sit and paint for a very long time what might feel like a very difficult painting to somebody else might not feel very as difficult to you if you don't have yet a lot of stamina in your painting when you're painting you might be like wow that was like crazy hard but what it really is is that you just haven't built up the, the painting stamina yet that takes time. You can see we're just getting the little fluffy fluffs. No. 
know. And as they... layer over each other and build up. Really cute. I wonder if he should be a mouse pad. He's so cute. Mm. He just makes me happy is what it is. I bet you he will be. Because he's a mouse on a mouse pad. It's so meta. <laughs> I know I'm super into myself and it's uh, probably not that clever, but it felt really clever in that moment. <laughs> I think it's pretty clever. Uh, last time I painted a dandelion, one of my twins told me, Mom, that's an awesome coronavirus painting. I have resisted painting the coronavirus, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't feel fond about it. Hmm. I don't. It's just been upsetting for me. I can't get to a space where I can think about it and paint it in a calm way. I'm just sad about how it's impacted people's lives, and I just want everyone to be okay, and their businesses to be okay, and their family members to be okay. Everybody just to be okay. And you know what, Don? Hmm. The coronavirus does not care No, if everyone is okay. And so I'm super annoyed at it. Super rude. This has turned out pretty fantastic. though. It is getting there. And it's just, it just takes a minute. You just got to kind of commit to some of the moments of it. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just meaning that. And the layers, they do, they add up, don't they? Just add up. Interesting, these like little spot umbrellas that were right here in front of this part of him, and they're, they're just so like in your face and yet so cute and made him. I love that these little creatures can just sit on a dandelion. Yeah. It's so awesome. As we have that there, and then we can put some dark little dots in there. I think the mouse would be a great storybook character, said Beth. I think so, too. And Tamu says, yeah, Bob, mouse, mouse pad. That's, that's, <laughs> that's up to him. I was like, yeah, for sure some of these more focal ones here, the ones that are more forward. Because you don't want to have like uh, areas that aren't light because on top of everything else, there's value, right? Yeah. You have values in the dandelion. You have to kind of keep track of that as well. And what you're doing. Get to our little dots and then mm. let's put some little seeds that are that are exploring the world and putting wishes out there. If wishes were fishes. Mm. There we go. Just painting along, just adding little dots. Dot, dot, dot. Those little dot, dots dot, are dot. good. Anytime. Take a painting class. Anytime, take a painting class. Watch from your favorite platform. I'm pretty good. Oh, I like that quite a lot. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and maybe some of my green quite bright and add some white into it. I'm going to also kind of talk about around some of this patterning exaggerate this and all that yellow kind of makes it a little bit brighter too and pulls it forward which we want now seeds are flowing away let's get i think uh maybe oh i know what i'm going to make up some of my i'm going to use a bigger i'm going to use a tool that lets me get more paint out of my moment so i'm going to take a little of my yellow here over to my red and mix up an orange. This is an artist knife. If you've never seen one of these before. Right. A terrific tool. I'm going to add a little burnt sienna to it. And I just grabbed a drop of water using the knife just to fluid it out. So that it'll, it'll work nice on my, on my detail brush. 
which I'm going to fly some seeds uh, there they are. off off the uh, dandelion. Stick at the base and then take a thin little bit open. So if you make the seed pod big and then the stem long, that's a closer seed pod. Mm -hmm. If you make it small and then the stem palm a little bit shorter, then that'll make it seem far away. You can really affect you know, what it's doing. I think it's nice just to put what makes you happy. You know, be aware that you want to keep your viewer with you on the surface. So you may want to, uh, you know, be thoughtful about that. I'm also going to take the time to come back with like a little bit of a black. Right. On the inside here and do some contrast so that later it pops a bit against the background. When you come put the highlight on there, it's going to go zzzz. Mm. I'm just kind of putting the shadows on the right hand side because I've actually been kind of putting all my lighting is focused over here from the left. Those, Those are really some, cute. They're gonna, I think they're going to look really nice coming off and going everywhere. Sharon Waters says he's so cute, and I'll say thank you. I am going to get a little bit of my yellow ochre and my white again. Mm, right. And let's add some highlight to these stems. You can see the highlights quite dramatic. Mm -hmm. right. There's a lot of gesture, and that just means the angle and motion of these lines, the way that they cause your eye to wander and think about things. Yeah. Like um, looking at this now, I'm going to want one more. Donna really likes the fluff. Does Donna like the fluff? Thank you, Donna. I'm going to add one more seed pod right there in front. I feel like it's needed. So I'll go back and redo my kind of orange color, my shadow, and my highlight. I think it's just worth it. That extra seed pod can be there. Don't you think? I think mm -hmm. so. Now. Let's put our fluff there. All right. I'm going to wipe off my brush and kind of just get into not totally white, but you know, whiter. And I will come here and say, let this seed fly far, far from here. And can go. A little far. See, you can see how it feels further away, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This is how scale, the relationship of objects, how they layer. If I were to put a small one on top of this one or layered over the top, it would just feel like a small seed. Ah. You also have to think about how the objects layer in relationship to each other. And that will also put 
them in scale and push them back or pull them forward. So there's your color, there's all kinds of things. This is so, this is so like the autumn, right? Mm -hmm. Just so the autumn. Feels like perfect for fall. So cute. So cute. So cute. Looking super incredibly cute. Might put a little brown dot in the center of that. Yeah. Maybe even this one here. Those are, those had so much realism. It is, and you know, and more importantly, whimsy. Hmm. You need whimsy. We do need whimsy. I think whimsy in art is important. Not that serious art isn't important too. I do think all art is important, but it is nice every once in a while, especially in our personal lives where we're painting for ourselves, to have images and concepts that we work on because we spend so much time with them that lift our spirit and help us just feel better about them. Mm -hmm. Coming through and adding those little fluffs. Add them little fluffs. You can see now that they're it's going away, right? They've got some yeah. space and they're heading away and He's just up there making a wish, doing harvest mousey things. Little black and brown in the center of some of these guys. Just to show them more realistically. Not nice. I like that very, very, very much. I think it turned out. Great. I'm super happy with that. I'm going to give that a sign. I'm going to use my ultramarine and my, uh, my fluid white here and my detail one, our trooper one. Now, guys, after this, I will go chapter this um, lesson so that um, if you're on YouTube and you're watching, you can go to like, oh, that's the background. That's sketching the mouse and that's putting in this fluff. I'll try to break it down so you can find the different segments of your lesson again. Um, if you had any questions that I didn't get to, just go ahead and ask them in the comments or in mm -hmm. group. If you'd like to share your version of Happy Harvest Mouse, you can absolutely take this cutie patootie into group and share him there. And I'm going to go take a picture of him and I'll put him in the store with some mouse pass set. I think mouse that's pack. a good idea. Yeah, I think so. He's super cute. I want to see him. <laughs> Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.